In her youth, Cassandra was originally an attractive human woman with pretty blue eyes and curled blonde hair who was renowned and admired for her beauty. At the drinks party for the ambassador of Thrace, she wore a glamorous silver dress. In her desperate pursuit of remaining the thinnest, most beautiful form possible, Cassandra eventually reduced her body through years of cosmetic and surgical enhancement to nothing more than a flat, translucent piece of skin stretched across a sleek metal frame that was as tall and wide as a man. Her eyes and mouth, both heavy with makeup, were all that remained of Cassandra's face, and her brain resided in a nutrient tank of bubbling liquid at the base of her mobile frame. The skin, which was taken from the front of her body, required constant moisturizing to prevent it from drying out and any wrinkles were cut out with a scalpel. By the time she arrived on Platform 1, Cassandra had undergone over 708 operations, including a complete removal of her chin, and prided herself on not looking, a day over 2,000. Rose characterized her as, lipstick and skin. When Cassandra's original skin was destroyed in the heat of Platform 1, she was able to rebuild herself with a skin taken from her posterior. By the time she and Rose met again on New Earth, Cassandra looked much the same as ever though her frame had grown rusty over time and she was connected to some form of oxygen tank. When she implanted her consciousness inside Rose with the aid of a psychograft, Cassandra's old skin evaporated and she took the form of a glowing streak of pink light when jumping between bodies. After possessing Rose's body, Cassandra appropriated her enemy's image and youthful physique. She gave her stolen body a mixed review at first, marveling at having arms and fingers again but dismayed at becoming a chav. Eventually, however, she came to admire Rose's sex appeal, noting her curves and nice rear bumper, and compared the experience to living inside a bouncy castle. When Chip praised her as beautiful, Cassandra agreed, though once again considered enhancing her new looks with surgery as she believed Rose could do with a little work. Having not had a physical human form of her own in centuries, Cassandra adopted a more provocative appearance while impersonating Rose that was at odds with Rose's true nature. She unzipped and later removed the blue jacket Rose wore on New Earth to show off her front, wearing only her purple blouse underneath with the top buttons undone to expose her cleavage. For a brief period, she kept a spray bottle of tranquilizing perfume concealed inside Rose's bra. She also took quite a shine to Rose's blonde hair, at first massaging it into a more volume style to resemble her own and constantly touching and fondling it with her fingers. Inside the doctor's body, Cassandra rejoiced at being male, noting the Time Lord's slim, foxy, frame, twin hearts and hardly used, parts. When she briefly possessed one of the hospital's female test subjects, she was aghast at her diseased, disgusting, appearance. Finally, inhabiting the Half-Life clone body of her servant Chip, she described herself as, a walking doodle, and was pleased with Chip's blue hat. When Cassandra died in the arms of her past self, Chip's body was wrapped in a black hooded robe so that his pale, gaunt features and strange tattoos appeared less conspicuous to the party guests.